It's Arsenal 3, West Ham 1. Come on, you Gunners. I did go for a 2-1 score, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. We have to break the mould that's been set in front of us. I support the players, even though they're not pulling their weight. And I support Freddie. I'm behind Freddie on this one. And that's the reason why I try to not come across too harsh. These guys are struggling at the moment. He, Freddie's only had four training sessions with the team thus far since he's taken over. So he hasn't had a lot of time to implement what he's wanted to. He's made a statement saying that what he's been doing for most of the time is going over film. So he actually hasn't had them out on the training ground for most of the time. They've been in studying film, looking at what they're not doing, looking at their shape, looking at the amount of space that they're not covering on the field. So let's talk about Freddie and why we won yesterday. First of all, Freddie got the team sheet right. Now, that, guys, is half the battle won. That is half of what you need to do in order to ensure that you're competitive for winning football games. And what he's done over the first two games is not given himself the best chance to win. So the team sheet yesterday, absolutely bang on. I wouldn't have gone for Socrates at the back, but then that's another thing altogether. When Holding comes back, that will take Socrates out of the team and we won't have to see the likes of him again. When Sabalas comes back, then hopefully you'll drop Zaka and then it would be Sabalas and Torreira as the two holding and then we can try and make some foothold in the stability for the midfield. Everything went balls up when Sabalas' hamstring went. Uh, we ain't looked the same team since he's been out. And look, it's not saying that Sabalas is a, a world breaker or anything. But it, what it was is he offered some stability there, some stability in possession and his passing, didn't give the ball away. A lot of the stuff that we're seeing Zaka do, Sabalas doesn't do that. So even when things are going well and stabilised, we can still look at a bright future forward once we get Bellerin. And I know Tony took a knock on his shoulder and then Sabalas is coming back. So I think that better stability is on the way as this team grows in confidence. And confidence was a big thing. Look, I know the first 60 minutes yesterday was horrible. Believe me, I nearly fell asleep twice <laughs> watching the game because I was bored out of my mind. You know, we didn't have a shot on target. In an hour. After that 60 minutes, I was, I was like, what is going on here? But all due respect, the second thing that Freddie did when he got them in at half time. He said, we have to move the ball qu quicker and we have to create more space. So basically, he was just trying to tell them to work harder. That, that, that's all it really was. And this begun with Torreira and Ozil. Now, if you look at the first goal, Torreira gets the ball and it's two touches. He goes straight into the flat, passes it on onto the left-hand side to Klasnach. And Klasnach puts a wonderful pass in to Martinelli who made the fantastic run and Arsenal are on the score sheet. And this is really important, important when you're down on confidence. But why it's even more important is because it shows that the feedback Freddie gave the team at half time is actually working and they're listening to him. So the fact that we were able to play the ball quicker speaks volumes in terms of what he was doing. Now the second goal, again, Ozil brings the ball up, passes two midfielders, and he puts the ball into Abamian, and Abamian finds Pepe, and of course Pepe brings it onto his left foot, and then Pepe curls it into the left-hand corner of the net on his favourite foot. Absolutely fantastic. The last goal again, Ozil. Ozil brings the ball up from the midfield. He slips the ball in between two defenders to Abamian, who paces it off to Pepe, who then gives it back to him. A nice chip from Pepe over two defenders, and then Abamian volleys the ball in. And guys, this is just a result of the ball being moved much quicker and more urgency in their play. That, that, that's all it is. Before that, nothing, everything was too slow. It was sideways, it was backways. And it was really negative. And the team was struggling to to get anything going. And look, these guys are pretty good in the final third. They just couldn't get it in the final third. So a well-deserved win, guys, and something that we need to celebrate. And I said this before in Sonny's podcast yesterday. If you haven't checked that out, check out Sonny's Unleashed Unfiltered podcasts. Um, they are absolutely fantastic. And uh, 
his subscribers are growing. He's over two and a half thousand subscribers now. And uh, big up Sonny for that. But what we were basically saying is, I was saying to the guys there that we should marvel the fact that we beat West Ham. Everyone's making it out like West Ham ain't no big deal. But when you look at Arsenal, we couldn't beat Norwich. We couldn't beat Southampton. We couldn't beat Watford. Now, those are teams that are lingering at the bottom of the table. So those are games that we were supposed to win, but we didn't. So we have already proved that we are not good enough to beat teams at the bottom of the league. So when you get a 3-1 win away from home, remember, away from home, Arsenal haven't won an away game since the first game of the season at Newcastle. So when you get a win like that, guys, this is the premiership. You've got to take it and you've got to celebrate and run with it because everything counts in this league. There is no game that is a gimme in this league. No team is going to lie down and take a beating for you. They won't do it. West Ham fully believed that they were going to win that game once they went 1-0 up because they knew that our confidence is probably worse than theirs. So, big respect. I'm, I'm not going to be one of these guys that's going to talk about the win cheaply. I'm going to celebrate that win last night and say, well done to the guys. And well done for Freddie to get your tactics right as well. Guys, it just was a big confidence booster for us. And I hope it's something we can improve on. And I hope, Freddie, that you learn to focus on the team sheet. Put the players on there that are going to be hungry and that are going to work hard for you and that are going to deliver the results. Don't put the players on there that have failed Wenger and failed Emery. Because if you do, there's only one way that your short managerial interim career is going to go. It's as simple as that. So, listen, well done, Arsenal. Let's focus and then well done, Pepe. Pepe was my man of the match. And the player ratings are in the comment section below. You can always find them there when I drop a video after the game. But I also want to talk about Arsenal Fan TV. Now, as you guys know, I've been on there a few times and obviously I've got my own platform because I want to do what I want to do. So Arsenal Fan TV is not for everybody, but what it is, is it's for the fans and it's for the fans to glorify their team and have their say. And something that people don't bring up is the fact that Arsenal got rid of the forum on their website, which kind of took the voice away from the fan. It wasn't just them. BBC had 606, didn't they? And they got rid of it. And all these platforms that allowed fans to voice their opinions has almost been taken away from us. So things like AFTV is a revelation for the fans because it allows us to have a voice. Now, my issue with that is you love your team, you've got to back your team, and your team are not always going to deliver a result. So sometimes it can be perceived as too negative to, to people. And look, if that's how supporters feel, then that's how they feel. You've got to take it, the rough with the smooth. It's the same way for me on Arsenal 101. You know, sometimes it's nice and rosy. Other times people are just down in the dumps with how the team are performing. That's just life, guys. We haven't got a God-given right to be winners. But the only way to get through it, guys, is to back your team. Now, in saying that, Talk sports making a big thing, not just talk sports, Sky Sports as well. All of these pundits have had it, they say, with, with Robbie Lyle and AFTV. And I'm going to stick up for Robbie here because the one thing that these guys at Talk Sport and Sky Sports are is jealous. Robbie has made a platform for himself and it's paying him good money and it's giving him good clout and he's built up his resume on AFTV and he's on Channel 4. Uh, doing the footballers uh, sports show and some people don't like it put a massive foothold in the industry which is better than them so look, so look i'm gonna check right now yeah if i go on youtube sorry i'm a little bit bunged up at the moment if i go on youtube and i type in talk sport radio so i've gone in to youtube yeah and i've typed in talk sport radio and do you know how much subscribers they've got? 715,000 subscribers. Robbie is over a million. So to say these guys are jealous speaks volumes. And that's why they don't like it. So it's tough. I don't care what them guys say. Yes, I, I get that some of the fans, the subscribers on Arsenal, um, on AFTV, are not Arsenal fans. Some of them are Man United fans, Spurs fans, look in to hear us scream and shout and pull our hair out. But, you know, that's just banter. That's just how banter works. 
But at the end of the day, it's a platform for fans to voice their opinion. That's it. Yeah? And the fact that it's bigger than your platform on TalkSport, you guys feel a way. But listen, we know your game. We know your game. You don't like a man like Robbie who's been able to make a living from AFTV while you guys are peddling away at TalkSport Radio, scraping your pennies. That's basically what it's all about. So listen, big up to you, Robbie, at AFTV. And big up to all the Arsenal YouTubers. You know you're all out there. Massive thanks to you, to you guys as well. And let's keep this ball rolling. And, and thanks to all you new subscribers as well. Hope you like the channel. Enough things are gone. And then my live stream is coming. And I've been dragging my feet on it. But my live stream is coming anyway, yeah? We're going to kind of do a show weekly. And we're probably going to look at the moment. I don't know whether Friday or Monday night is the best way to do it. But um, we'll, we'll have a look at it and see what works best for other people. I think Monday's a nice night because it's after the weekend's action. Um, I'm not looking at Friday at the moment because too much people have got too many things to do on a Friday evening, myself included. So I think Monday night is probably going to be the best time to have a weekly show. And we'll invite guests from 101 and YouTube and, and, and everywhere else who'd like to come on and voice their opinion. So I think that that will be something that will work best. But thanks for your support. Really appreciate it, guys. And uh, yeah, big up to everybody. Right back at you. Peace out, man.